Okay, следващата ни лекция започва. Заповядайте. Uh, тя ще бъде на английски. So, I'll be switching in English. Uh, our next presenter is Stefan Nika. Uh, he uh, will present remotely. So, you'll be see, uh, yeah, you're already able to see him here. Um, he is a software developer and architect at Zeus. Uh, he has uh, about uh, he has 15 years of experience in the field, and he will speak today about DevOps in the field of machine learning. So take it away, Nika. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So hello and welcome to this introduction to um, machine learning, MLOps, and the FusML project. I hope you can hear me okay. The topic for this talk is how to accelerate the development of production grade machine learning systems with uh, MLOps and FuseML. So I'll start by taking you on a journey through the machine learning land where together we'll explore, we'll discover why machine learning is such a disruptive technology and so fundamentally different than traditional software engineering. That'll give us a nice transition into MLOps, short for machine learning operations, which is a trendy and rather new um, engineering discipline and a set of best practices that are bringing quite a lot of important changes in the industry. Last topic on the agenda is FuseML, which, yes, brings me to who I am. My name is Stefan Nika. I am a software developer and architect. I work at SUSE. I am part of the artificial intelligence and machine learning team and FuseML is the new and exciting um, open source project that we've been working on and that we recently launched. At the end, if you feel hungry, still feel hungry for more information, here are a few resources that you can try and explore. Head over to the FuseML website. Um, you'll find the links to documentation and videos explaining how you can um, use FuseML, how, what it does, the, the type of problems that it's trying to solve, um, also how you can install it and use it on your own. Or you can read the, the series of articles that I'm currently writing on the same topic on the SUSE community website. Lastly, you can head straight to the source on, on GitHub. Whatever you do, if you like the FuseML project or if you think it solves a problem that is relevant to you or your organization, uh, we can really use your feedback. So I encourage you to join us on our Slack channel and share us your opinion there and ask questions and and, and more. Um, otherwise, the uh, simplest thing you can do is to uh, give us a star on GitHub to help us promote the project. Okay, so let's get it on. Machine learning is um, technology that is based on a category of systems that have this unique capability of learning from data. Uh, they can identify patterns in data, they can be trained to identify patterns in data, and then later on reproduce those same patterns with minimal human supervision. Um, you'd normally use machine learning to solve problems that are difficult or even impossible to solve mathematically or programmatically, or where doing so is not feasible because it is too computationally expensive. These are some of the patterns that uh, machine learning systems can be trained on. Um, some of them are uh, resemble things that us humans can also learn to do quite easily, things like object recognition and speech recognition. Some of them, though, are things that uh, are more difficult or even impossible for us to do properly, to learn and to replicate from learning a new language to predicting the traffic or even the weather. That's basically impossible for us. This takes care of... Uh, while well, covering what machine learning um, is, what its definition is, and some of its applications. But you might be wondering, what exactly is involved in building a machine learning system? So let's have a look at that next. This is a basic machine learning workflow. It all starts by collecting and, and processing data that is relevant to the problem that you're trying to solve. Uh, you can generally think of training data as a set of examples, a training examples where each example pairs an input with the desired output that we want the machine learning system to learn. 
And this data is then used in a process where a machine learning algorithm or model is trained on it until it learns the association between the inputs and the outputs. The result is a trained machine learning model that you can use to generate predictions. Key takeaway here is that machine learning introduces these new and unusual classes of artifacts and, and processes that you don't normally encounter in traditional software engineering. Data and machine learning models, training and prediction. And it all looks kind of simple, doesn't it? But don't be fooled by this. Um, machine learning is really, or can be, really, really difficult. Um, this is a simplified machine learning workflow that works for research and um, academia and even some smaller machine learning projects. But to build machine learning systems that are, really, that are really production grade, that are reliable and maintainable in production, we need a lot more. And over the, next, uh, over the course of the next slides, we're going to be adding new components to this machine workflow, machine learning workflow, um, and to make it suitable for production. Right, so let's start by introducing the data preparation and model selection or modeling phases. In machine learning, data quality is really, really critical. So there's a whole range of activities that revolve around data. Data needs to be collected and stored properly, which is especially important at scale. It, need to be, it needs to be cleaned, validated, and transformed into something that the machine learning algorithm can understand that is suitable for machine learning. Because the machine learning model has no idea what a JPEG file is or what an MP3 file is. Uh, it only understands numerical values. Um, more than 80% of a data scientist's time is spent doing some form of data manipulation or transformation. The effort that goes into model selection, into modeling, is also important. Um, choosing the correct architecture and parameters for the machine learning algorithm is really critical, is key in, in creating machine learning models that uh, perform well in production. And so um, another thing that is really curious or even unusual about machine learning is that the development of machine learning models is really involves a lot of experimentation, right? So a data scientist often has to go through a lot of these iterations of collecting data, preparing it correctly, um, tuning or retuning the machine learning algorithm parameters to create machine learning models that are that that can um, that can make uh, high quality predictions. So um, the need for experimentation also means that it can be difficult or even impossible to fully automate all these phases that are part of the machine learning workflow. And that's probably a good thing because we all know what happens when we give machines the ability to train themselves, right? But you, you don't have to be worried because that's not going to happen anytime soon. Um, in machine learning, creativity and intuition backed by experience, those are still very, very important and they're not going to be um, automated anytime soon. But at the other end of the workflow, Let's see what happens when we put a machine learning model in production. Machine learning models in production by themselves are quite useless. They're, they're, they're useless. Uh, they are usually part of a larger machine learning system or application. There are other considerations that need to be uh, taken care. They need to be addressed in production, such as scalability, reliability, and maintainability. And for all these, uh, best practice is to embed the machine, learning, uh, the machine learning model into something called the prediction service, which is basically a web uh, microservice that wraps around the model, exposes a REST API uh, through which the model can be accessed to generate predictions. There are a lot of, um, there are a lot of nice uh, advantages to this uh, approach. Um, one is the fact that you can scale um, the prediction service independently of the other components in the machine learning system to account for live traffic requirements. It also tremendously simplifies the process of updating machine learning models that are running in production without uh, impact to service availability through rolling updates. Yes. Speaking about updating machine learning models in production, 
um, here's another weird thing about machine learning. Models have this kind of um, obsolescence built into them. The moment you put a machine learning model in production, the moment you deploy it, it begins to degrade. And it's not because the machine learning model itself uh, changes, but because the world around it and the data that comes from it, they begin to change. Um, I mean, think about it. Um, as far as I know, time travel hasn't really been perfected yet. So the only kind of data that you can use to train your models is the data that you collected in the past. That means that machine learning models are outdated the moment they finish training. And so to, to account for this complication, what needs to be done for the machine learning model and also the data that it's, it's being used on in production is a specialized type of monitoring, right? To continuously assess and reassess um, if the machine learning model is, is accurate. And whenever accuracy drops, what we need to do is to retrain the model, um, the same model or even create a different one and train it on new data to account for changes in the environment. And the process of doing that, the process of continuously training machine learning models in production is called continuous training. Okay, so here's, uh, let's take a short break. I'm throwing a lot of information at you and it's all at once, so I hope you're doing okay. Uh, take a look at what's going on here. Well, we have uh, been uh, significantly um, complicating this machine learning workflow. There are all these phases involved and there's a continuous, a continuous flux of, um, of, <clears throat> of artifacts that are circulating between these phases. So it's, it's going to be really tough, really difficult to keep track of everything that's going, that's going on. And you guessed it, we have to introduce new components, new specialized components in the workflow this time, it, it's components that can be used to not only store, but also version both data and machine learning models. And we also need another specialized type of store where we record uh, the path that all these artifacts are taking through the individual stages. That one is called a machine learning metadata store. This is really important to bring us features such as uh, reproducibility and observability, and overall, uh, for instance, taking uh, being able to say to tell what data was used to train which models and what uh, training parameters was were used. Okay, <clears throat> so this looks better now, but we still have one problem. We're going to be doing this quite a lot, and the last thing we need is to have to do it manually. So you guessed it. What we need is automation. Uh, not this type of automation. Um, but machine learning does provide a specialized type of automation. Uh, it's called automated pipelines. Pipelines are, um, they represent, they have the same kind of outline as the machine learning workflow that we've been studying so far. So they, they're uh, built out of automated steps, which step takes in artifacts and generates artifacts, and they can be put together in, um, in a structure that resembles a graph, a direct acyclic graph that's what a DAG. Okay, so I think we're good now and we're uh, nearing the end of our story. Um, we have a machine learning workflow that, well, that we can say can be used in, uh, in production, but there's still some one, one thing that's missing and can, can you tell what it is? It's people. I know it's trivial, but people are really, really important in machine learning uh, because Machine learning development requires the collaboration of all these roles and, and, uh, and actors that have different skills, uh, experience, they have backgrounds, backgrounds in both science and engineering. And I'm not going to cover what those roles are for in the interest of saving some time. I'm just going to list them here so you see them. And by now you're probably starting to understand why I'm telling you that machine learning can be really, really tricky, really difficult. Ooh, so what we need to account for all this complexity is, uh, well, a set of best practices, um, similar to what DevOps does for conventional engineering. And that brings me to um, MLOps. And what you may not realize is that we've been kind of talking about MLOps all this time. Everything that we've, we've covered is uh, one form or another of a best practice that MLOps introduces, that MLOps ad advocates for. So this slide is just to summarize what we've been talking about so far. Um, MLOps doesn't really need uh, an introduction. All 
On to the last topic on the agenda, and I'm uh, racing through this. Uh, FuseML is an orchestration framework for MLOps. Um, I don't know what that tells you. That basically means that it can be used to automate the uh, machine learning lifecycle, the production machine learning life cycles. But far more than just being another automation tool, it's how FuseML does all this that sets it apart from other um, open source projects that deal with MLOps. Let's, let's see what that means exactly. So FuseML is a cloud native application. Nothing really special about that. That just means that it can be installed in any Kubernetes cluster. Uh, it will install aside from the core service, also some components, some built-in components that provide features that are fundamental to the machine learning workflow. Giri is a, a Git repository, a Git server. That's where all the machine learning code ends up in being stored and, and versioned. With Docker registry, we use it to store all the images or the container images that we build and use as components in the automated pipelines. And Tekton, of course, is the, the pipeline engine. Next, FuseML is an open extensible integration framework. And that's a mouthful, I know. What exactly does that mean? Why is that relevant? Let's just say that there's a, a really vibrant, really <laughs> impressive um, system of tools, of machine learning tools out there, and more and more are popping up each day. Uh, it's really a vibrant uh, ecosystem, and, and it's really great to be part of. Um, automating the uh, production machine learning lifecycle requires, uh, often requires combining several of these tools, um, and, and often these tools don't play well with one another. Even when interoperability is advertised, uh, often uh, one needs to put in a lot of extra legwork to integrate them together, to get them to work together correctly. And that's where FuseML comes in. Uh, FuseML provides a set of extensibility mechanisms that can be used to automatically integrate these tools together and use them to implement automated workflows. That's the other thing that FuseML is, an orchestrator. Um, it can be used to automate the same kind of um, machine learning workflows that we've been covering. And the way it does that is these tools that it integrates uh, with, it uses them to as components to implement all the various stages in the workflow. And I have an example here with PVC use the data as a data store, MLflow as a model store, Katib is automating the model um, selection. KF Serving and Selden are both uh, prediction service platforms. They manage those prediction services. And because this ecosystem of tools is constantly expanding, the last thing you want is to be stuck into a tool set. Um, you can use FuseML to write extensions to, to add support for new tools as they become available. Um, in this case, you can write a tool for Seldon to replace KF serving um, in the, with the workflows that you're already using. That's always nice to have. OK, finally. Um, it's OK to write uh, extensions for FuseML and um, define workflows that are suitable for your use case. But it would be even better if you could share them with the rest of the world. And that's why around FuseML, we're building, we're trying to build an, an ecosystem of extensions and reusable machine learning recipes that are um, based on best practices and contributed by ML uh, practitioners that everyone else can use, that everyone else can relate to. So it's even easier to uh, use, to automate machine learning workflows. Instead of reinventing the wheel, you can just use the recipes that are at your disposal. Right, so on, on one last note, uh, my personal um, vision, my personal hope for the project is that we can use it to um, further standardize, to, to pave the way to further standardization for MLOps and to achieve interoperability for all these machine learning tools. That hopefully gives you enough information about FuseML to trigger your interest. Here are again some resources, some resources that you can use to access more information. Please reach out to us on Slack to give us your opinion and ask questions and um, maybe even give us a star on GitHub to help support the project, but also all these ideas that I've been sharing with you. And I hope this has been an interesting journey, even though a fast one. Uh, thank you for your attention and you know, take care.
Stefan, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it was a very nice overview of the two. I'll be definitely checking it out. Uh, we don't have much time for questions, so I encourage everyone to check out the links from Stefan and continue the discussion and questions online.